Hi, welcome back to another installment of the Farm to Table virtual series. As always, I will get you guys started with some basic information and Eileen will follow up the next week with a fun, easy recipe that you guys can do at home. So this week's topic is oats. So let's just go ahead and jump right into some general information about our topic. Oats are annual grasses. Modern oats probably originated from the Asian wild red oat, which grew as a weed in other grain crops. Archaeological studies show that oats have been found dating from about 2000 BC, but these grains were probably simply just weed seeds. Oats have a couple of traits that cause them to be less flavor favored than other grains, such as a bland taste and a tendency to spoil. Greeks and Romans considered oats to be a diseased wheat, and many cultures believed them to be better suited for animals. Despite these issues, oats became a staple in Germany, Ireland, Scotland, and Scandinavian countries. Oats were introduced to North America and other grains by Scottish settlers in 1602. They gradually became a major crop until about 1920 when machines began to replace horsepower. Acreage that was previously devoted to feed oats has now been replaced by soybeans, which is a more marketable crop. With the advanced knowledge about nutrition, oats were recognized as a healthy food in the mid-1980s and therefore became, a more, became more popular once again for human nutrition. Oats have a variety of uses. They are more recognized as animal feed or for human consumption, but there are a couple of other uses for these crops such as medicinal purposes. They can protect, protect against cancers and heart disease, enhance immune response to infection, stabilize blood sugar, soothe skin, and other conditions and other ailments. Agronomy, it's a cover crop for a weed barrier or a starter crop. It helps with erosion control, ground cover, and fertilizer. And some other uses just are simply cosmetics, fibers, paper, animal bedding, pillow filling, fungicides, and herbicides. So there are a couple of different types of oats. So you've got raw, raw oats, which are when they're newly harvested. So this is what the oats look like before the kernels or the groats are separated from the holes and the stalks. Next you have whole oat groats. A groat is another name for a grain kernel. Whole oat groats are the result of simply harvesting oats, cleaning them, and removing their inedible holes. You can most often find these in health food stores. They do take the longest to cook. Next, we have steel cut oats. If you cut groats into two or three pieces with a sharp metal blade, you get steel cut oats. They cook quicker than oat groats because water can more easily penetrate the smaller pieces. Steel cut oats are also sometimes called Irish oatmeal. Scottish oatmeal. Instead of cutting the oats with a steel blade, the Scots traditionally stoned, stone ground, gr grind them, creating broken bits of varying sizes, which some say result in a creamier porridge than steel cutting. Rolled oats. Regular or old-fashioned is what this is also known as. So rolled oats, sometimes called old-fashioned oats, are created when oat groats are steamed and then rolled into flakes. This process stabilizes the healthy oils in the oats so they stay fresh longer and helps the oats cook faster by creating a greater surface area. Now we have rolled oats, which are your quick or instant version. So if you roll out the oat flakes thinner and steam them longer, you can create quick oats and ultimately instant oats. The nutrition stays the same. They, these are all whole grains, but the texture changes. A plus for some people and a drawback for others. The good thing about having so many choices is that you can find what you prefer and like best. <laughs> and next we have oat flour. So oat flour is a whole grain flour that can be used in baking or for thickening soups and stews. So the basics of growing oats. So when it comes to planting, seeds should be grown outdoors. Sow the seeds of wild oats at a depth of six millimeters at the beginning to middle of spring. Seedlings of wild oats can be purchased. Annual varieties should be planted in the early spring, whereas perennial varieties can be planted either in early spring or in the fall. Depending on the variety of wild oat seedlings should be planted 25 to 30 centimeters apart or 45 to 60 centimeters apart, depending on your variety. 
They should be planted in an area that receives full sunlight and dry soil with a pH of 6 to 7.5. Maintaining. Keep the ground moist to allow seeds to germinate. Can, can continue to do so as the plants begin to grow. The compost or manure should help the oats remain, uh, retain moisture, but it will be necessary to water them periodically whenever the soil, soil begins to dry out. If the area you live in gets plenty of rain, however, you may not have to water them as much or at all. Oats can also be used as a nutrient catch crop, smother crop, fall legume crop, nurse crop, or a spring green manure slash companion crop. So next we're going into pest and diseases. These are just three of the most common ones. However, these are not the only ones. So if you do have questions or would like to know a couple of the others, feel free to shoot me an email and that will be uh, given to you at the very end of this presentation. So first we have, um, in fact, uh, sorry, and thracnose, which is a fungus. Symptoms are red to brown oval lesions on the leaves. Black fungal structures may be visible on lesions. Crowns become bleached and then turn brown. Plants are more susceptible to lodging. So management, provide plants with adequate levels of fertilizer. You can rotate uh, the crops to improve soil quality, control the weeds in a field, Turn crop debris into soil after harvest to limit release of spores and avoid planting oats in soils with a very high pH. Next, we have crown rust, which is another fungus. So symptoms include chlorotic uh, flecks or brown necrotic spots on leaves or stems, yellow streaks or patches on foliage, brown necrotic streaks on fo uh, foliage, and raised orange um, pustules may be present on legions. Management. The most effective method of controlling rust is to plant resistant variety of oats. Planting oats early allows them to mature before the spores reach the plants and escape most damage. Next, we have aphids, which is an insect. So symptoms include yellow or white streaked leaves. Flag leaves may be curled up. Plants may be stu uh, stunted and tillers may lie parallel to the ground. Plants may turn a purple color um, in cold weather. Insects are small and soft bodied and it may be yellow, green, black, or pink in color depending on the species. Insects secrete a sugary substance called honeydew, which promotes the growth of sooty mold on the plants. Management. Sturdy plants can be sprayed with a strong jet of water to knock the aphids off the leaves. Inse insecticides are generally only required to treat aphids if the infestation is very high. Um, plants generally tolerate low and medium levels of infestation. Insecticidal soaps or oils such as neem or canola oil are usually the best method for control. And as always, I like to finish with a couple of fun facts about our subject. Um, and again, this should say oats, not corn. I apologize. Um, that was the previous topic. So oats are used primarily, again, as for food for livestock, with only about 5% of the world crop being used for human consumption. The most popular oatmeal toppings are milk, sugar, fruit, such as raisins and bananas, and butter or margarine. The most unusual are eggnog, peanut butter, cottage cheese, and brewer's yeast. Oatmeal cookies are the number one non-cereal usage for oatmeal. 75% uh, of U.S. households have oatmeal in their cupboard. Oatmeal is heart healthy. Studies show that eating oatmeal daily as a part of a diet uh, low in saturated fat and cholesterol may help reduce the risk of heart disease. And Quaker Oats was the first U.S. breakfast cereal to receive a registered trademark, the first to offer a recipe and premium on its package, and the first to offer trial-sized samples. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, here are a list of the sites that I used for my presentation. Again, I like to um, reiterate, stay tuned for Eileen's fun, easy recipe next week. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me or Eileen an email. Our email addresses are on the screen. Um, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.